How y'all doing? Good? Are y'all ready to listen fast and good today? We'll see. We'll see. I'll be the judge of that, okay? We'll, uh, we'll get going. Uh, so glad to have you Sunday morning. If you don't know, my name is Landon. I'm on staff here at church. Pastor Nate and Evan still at a prayer conference. Aren't you thankful for pastors at a prayer conference? Yeah. Getting the word, praying, and you know they're going to bring back something good for us. Um, so uh, let's, uh, and there's a lot of people on spring break. We got a good crowd today. Uh, anyone go on spring break, vacation, and you're back? Back? Or you're like, no, we're the ones who just stayed home and cleaned like Austin did. Yeah, all right, that's us. Hey, we're the ones in church today. You know what we're going to do, though? We're going to believe for the people coming back. We're going to ask the Lord for protection for them coming back. Uh, aren't you thankful for a body of believers? If that was you out, that you got someone praying for you, right? That's awesome. You know, I've, I've seen and heard of some people um, maybe dealing with sickness or things like that. Don't you know, if that's you, you're thankful for a body of believers you're connected to that are lifting you up and speaking God's word over you, right? We talked on Wednesday night uh, about some of the things we've been talking about lately. Authority, right? We've been talking about authority, and we're going to use our authority. Uh, and how do we use our authority? Jesus said this was great faith right here uh, because I, the, the centurion knew, uh, he knew what authority meant. He said, Jesus, just speak the word and healing will flow. So you know that we can speak the same words that Jesus did. I'm doing a lot of this right now. It's going to happen, all right? I'll give you the, the gun. Just ignore that, okay? I get it. I'm working on it. It's better than this, though, okay? But listen, listen. We're going to speak the word, and healing, we believe healing will flow, and it will do what his word. Is. It's not our word. We're saying his word. So we expect his word to do it. So let's, uh, let's lift some people up in prayer. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And we plead and apply the blood of Jesus over all those traveling. We thank you that angels surround them on every side as they come on their way back. Uh, and Lord, we just thank you that you're with them always, always, when they get back safely where they're coming from. And anyone who's dealing with sickness right now, we, we send your word. Your word says that by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. So if they are children of God, they have access to this. And by Jesus' stripes, they were healed. So what we do as fellow believers, we send your word now. We say they are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Healing flow to them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, it can be that simple, speaking the word. It doesn't have to be this long, drawn-out prayer. If you're ever in a situation, don't be discouraged to pray because you think it takes so, so much time. Open your mouth and let God's word come out. You'd be, you'd be shocked and surprised and in awe of what happens. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get going this morning. Uh, as I typically do, I ripped off some jokes to read to you so that you'll like me before we get started, all right? So that's what we're going to start with. Uh, I, I read this good one where there was a, this snail who uh, went to buy a car, and he was talking to the car salesman. And he said, I want this really expensive, fast car. And the salesman was surprised. You know, it's a snail. He wants this really fast, expensive car. And then he also told him, he said, I want you to have them paint an S on each side of the car. And he was like, oh, that's, that's weird. Why, why do you want that? And he said, when, when I'm driving by, I want people to say, look at that S car go. <laughs> S car go. <laughs> Little... <laughs> I'm, I mainly do this for Kyle, because I, I appreciate the humor. Uh, I had a crazy dream last night that I was swimming in an ocean of orange soda. Turns out it was just a fantasy. Ah! I, have y'all heard that? I've never heard that. That was pretty good. Listen, this, listen I, this next one may, may take you a second, but I'm going to wait, because it was really good. I laughed on my own yesterday just, just reading it. So a priest, a pastor, and a rabbit entered a clinic to donate blood. The nurse asked the rabbit, what's your blood type? I'm probably a typo, said the rabbit. <laughs> Come on. I'm probably a typo. Rabbit, rabbi, he's a, the rabbit's a typo. Okay. Hey, when y'all laugh about 20 minutes from now, I'll get it, all right? I'll know it'll be from this, and... Uh, yeah, just, just do it. Uh, laugh real honoring since it'll be during the message, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. All right, hey, so um, 
We're going we're gonna to get with it this morning. I'm not going to keep you too long, but I'm going to keep you the, the required amount of time to get God's Word out the way it needs to. So, uh, a true show of hands, uh, I actually taught a message a couple of Wednesdays ago called Give Me the Truth. How many of you may have been here for that Wednesday night message? Give me the truth. Okay, good. So, there's quite a few people who, who weren't here. So this will be good to go over. For those who were here, this is going to be good to go over again. So if you know, we, we looked in Jeremiah chapter 6. We, we were at the crossroads, right? We're going back to the crossroads today, okay? We're going back to the crossroads, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, um, I want to turn to Luke chapter 16. Uh, and if you're going along with us in our Bible reading, you would know that Luke 16 was our chapter on Friday, right? This was on Friday, and so... In reading this, uh, there's a passage that just really stuck out to me that I wanted to read and uh, get us started this morning. All right, uh, we're going to start in verse 27. This is at the end of the chapter, and this is about the rich man and Lazarus. So Jesus was was, uh, speaking here. He said, uh, the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want... So do you all know the premise of this story? Okay, I, for those of you who don't, so the rich man and Lazarus, uh, there was this Lazarus, this poor man, this beggar, who was living at this rich man's gate. Well, he, he died, and he was carried off, the Bible says, to Abraham's bosom. So this was, pre, this was pre-Christ going to the cross, all right? And then uh, finally, the rich man died, all right? And it says that he goes to, to hell, all right? And so we're here, and the rich man is there. He says, please, Father Abraham, at least send him Lazarus to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. So, I, it, you know, I, in reading this in the past, I've read that, I'm like, man, that's kind of, you know, that almost seems kind of harsh. That like, no, I'm not going to send someone back from the dead to warn them. I love them, but, but they get the same opportunity that everyone does, right? And if they won't listen to what Moses and the prophet said, this is what astounds me right here. It says they won't believe, even if someone rises from the dead and tells them. Hey, I've been to this horrible place because I made this decision on earth. Make this decision so you won't... But they wouldn't even believe it if someone rose from the dead and told them that. You know that there are people who've had these experiences that we've heard about. Like firsthand stories of people who have entered that place and come back and tell people, and there are still people who won't believe. Isn't that amazing? If you won't believe what's in here right now, There is nothing that will make you believe. Nothing. This is the only thing right here. We know that faith comes, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes how? By hearing this right here. By hearing the word. Faith doesn't come because I saw a sign. Faith doesn't come because I saw a miracle happen. Faith only comes because I heard the word. I heard the word. Say amen. 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 And Jesus said, Jesus said this to uh, Thomas. He said, listen, Thomas, you believed because you saw. You saw, and I'll, I'll let you fill the holes right here. He said, blessed are those who believe and they haven't seen. Any of you seen Jesus face to face? But you believe, right? Jesus says you're blessed because you believe and you haven't seen. And, you know, there were, there were times, many times, when the Pharisees were asking Jesus for a sign and he said, it, you know what he called it when they asked for a sign? Evil. This evil, your evil generation, you, keep, you ask for a sign. He said, the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of the prophet Jonah, right? And it goes on from there. We're not going to get into that. We don't have time. But it, this is just so important, and this is why I'm so thankful that we're reading our chapter. We're reading a chapter, one chapter, one chapter, Monday through Friday, you can do this. Say, I can do this. There, there is revelation for you in reading your Bible uh, with us. Together. Isn't it cool to get this stuff together? Together. And it was just amazing reading through this because I heard, I heard Bill Johnson say this one time, and it really hit home with me. He said that there are many people today, and honestly, I found myself in this boat at different times, 
who have more faith and more expectation in the rapture than they do in the gospel. So I've put, as a Christian, I've put my faith in an event that I know is going to happen because it's in the gospel. I know that it's going to happen and it's coming, but I've put my faith in that coming to save me from this world instead of the gospel itself. Man, we don't want to, we don't want to be in that boat right there because the gospel is the power of God for us right here and now. Right here and now. Like, we can put our faith more in an event than the event planner. Man, he's the, he's the one who planned that. Proof, proof for people who are looking for proof, you know that proof is useless if someone uh, isn't you know, ready to believe. It just means nothing to them. It doesn't. And, you know, you hear about the Apostle Paul talking about the word, you know, he, uh, and I don't even know uh, where it's at in here, but he's saying that th- this word right here, this word, uh, he, God chose to save people by the foolishness of preaching, of preaching. And so sometimes we can just minimize even the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, because we need more, we need more substance, but this is substance right here. It's substance. And this is all, this is all that we need. And I believe, I believe that there's going to be a great number of people after the rapture come to Christ. I do. I believe that. But that's only if they've heard the word first. I mean, isn't, isn't it going to be amazing when millions upon millions of people evacuate the planet and there will still be people who don't believe? But how could they believe unless they first heard it? Right? They have to hear this. And how are they going to hear this unless people like you and I know this so that we can share it with people? How? People have to hear this. We've got to know this. The Word is the only thing that will produce faith. Somebody say the Word. The Word. word. It's the only thing. So when our hearts, and this is like, let's take a moment now, and if it's not, my heart needs to be set towards the Word. It needs to be turned towards the Word so that faith is present for God to confirm His Word. This This is the order in how God's confirming Word works. God does not confirm with signs and wonders. God confirms his word with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders don't come, and then you can give the word after that. It doesn't work that way. Signs will follow those who believe, but the word was first preached. Signs confirm the word. Somebody say, the word. Say, give me the word. What you need is the word. What you need is the word. It's the word. So, speaking of the word, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Uh, this is what we, on that Wednesday, we opened up with, and I want to go back to it here. It says, All Scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Any ever, ever have anything wrong in your life? Guess, guess what can point it out to you? The Word. It's the Word. It corrects us when we're wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. So it doesn't just correct you when you're wrong. It corrects you by teaching you to do what is right. What does that? The Word. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. We're going to do some. Y'all are going to repeat after me, so get ready. This is not hard. This is like the easiest thing you can do is just to repeat something after somebody. I'm not making you say, like, weird stuff. That's not good. I'm making you say the word. It's the word of God. So if you're not doing that and you're just sitting back with your arms crossed, like, what is this guy doing? This is the lowest form of participation that you can have in the kingdom of God. Just repeating something that someone says. I, I remember I did a frontline message of our men's thing. I don't know, last year or sometime, but I kind of yelled a little bit for a while because there wasn't, you know, there was like, I don't know. 15, 20 guys there, and like I just, you know, I'll just look at people face to face, and like they're not repeating anything I'm saying. I'm like, I yelled. And I'm like, if you can't in this room with other men who are doing the same thing, repeat God's word and say God's word, what makes you think you're going to do it anywhere else, ever? And without saying God's word, Pastor Austin was talking about it, without releasing God's word out of your mouth, you are going nowhere. Nowhere. That's, this is just the truth. It's the truth. 
So can you repeat this after me? Okay. Let's see. All right, let's say this. God is using his word to prepare and equip me to do every good work. All right, one more time. God is using his word to prepare and equip me to do every good work. Yes. Amen. God's using his word for that. I want to read this from the Passion Translation. It says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God-breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. The answer to all of life's questions is in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. It's right here. I've, I wondered this when I was a young man. You know, there are times in your life you wonder, how are the answers to what I'm going through now uh, in here? They can't be. What I need to know is specific, and I know this person's name that's in this situation isn't in here, and I know that this particular thing, I've never read or seen anything in the Bible that pertains to my situation right now. Well, you missed it then. It's in here. It's in here. You, you know where it could have been? It could have been in Luke chapter 16 or whatever the chapter is that we just read. Luke, yeah, Luke 16, I was right. Luke 16, it could have been in there. How could it be in there? We read about Lazarus and a rich man, a parable that Jesus told. It can be there. See, this is, this is the, the wonder of the gospel right here. It can be there. Your specific situation, the answer to it, can be found in the word where you least expect it. And here's why. Because the author of the word, the Holy Spirit, someone say the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. when I become familiar with how he talks, then I'm going to become, I'm going to become uh, more aware of when he's speaking on the inside of me regarding my specific situation. So if I know how he talks and what he sounds like because I'm in the Word and I'm reading my chapter and I'm talking to God, oh, you know what I'm doing right here? I'm, I'm talking to God. I'm communicating to God. I'm not just reading words. I'm communicating with God. Like, Did you hear what, what we just read here? It says, God has transmitted his very substance into Scripture. Like this is God right here. It's God. And so when I know what the Holy Spirit sounds like because... I'm talking to him all the time. When he talks to me about what's going on in my life, where I'm at right now, guess what? I can hear, and I can understand, and I can now act on, how did I get that? How did that come? It was, it was from the Word. It was from the Word. Your answer is in the Word. Say, my answer's in the Word. So I love what this says here. It says it's going to take the right, uh, it'll give you the strength. This will give you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. So these words, direction and path, this is where we're going to kind of land at today and what we're going to talk about. The title of today's message is called Paths. Paths. P-A-T-H-S. Paths. So let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah 6, and we're going to read verses 16 through 20. Are you all here? All right. Jeremiah 6, 16. This is what the Lord says. We're gonna, I'm going to read through this, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to dive deep. Are you all ready? Yeah. I've got a marker board. I don't know. Uh, I said I didn't know if I'm going to use it. Oh, they put a nice little smiley face with a tongue there. Cool. We'll get rid of that. Thank you, though. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use this um, because I was kind of fleshing some of this stuff out on a piece of scrap paper before. You know how when you do something and you're studying and, and it's kind of all coming together, you're like... I. I don't know if I can recreate that, but we may do our best, okay? We'll just see. Some of you, how many of you are visual learners? All of you. Geez, read a book. Okay. <laughs> y'all, y'all still reading those picture books? You're like, that's why I don't read my Bible. There's no pictures in here to tell me anything. All right. Well, we'll help you out this morning. All right, Jeremiah 6, 16. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path, and you will find rest for your souls. But you replied, no, that's not the road we want. I posted watchmen over you who said, listen for the sound of the alarm. But you replied, no, we won't pay attention. Therefore, listen to this, all you nations. Take note of my people's situation. 
Listen, all the earth, I will bring disaster on my people. It is the fruit of their own schemes because they refuse to listen to me. They have rejected my word. There's no use offering me sweet frankincense from Sheba. Keep your fragrant calamus imported from your distant lands. I will not accept your burnt offerings. Your sacrifices have no pleasing aroma for me. So let's go back to chapter, uh, verse 16, if you can just leave that up there if you want. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. So um, I know many of you I have. Can, uh, can you all see this over here? Probably not. All right, well, let's get crazy here. I know, that was crazy. That was wild, wasn't it? <laughs> Y'all didn't know that I was going to move the podium today. I mean, listen, you don't, you don't know what's next. You have no idea what could happen next. All right, so how many of you have been at a crossroads before in your life? Um, and you think about a crossroads, sometimes we think that, man, a crossroads is like some major decision you know, I've, I've come, I'm at a crossroads. I don't, there's a couple of different options here that I can choose, and I'm not real sure which is the right one. So that's kind of the, you know, there's that scenario, but I want to I wanna boil it down a little bit more and break it down and, and say, you know, there's crossroads that we're probably coming up to every day um, that we don't really acknowledge as crossroads. And we're probably creating some of these crossroads, uh, or there's just situations that come up. There's a word there's a word that comes up. There's something that happens in your life. And your words, like what you say about that situation, can create a road in your life. Right? Like your words do this. Your words, the Bible talks about this in, in James. Your words steer the direction of your life. And, you know, th this is why I was kind of so adamant earlier about us repeating God's word. And, and why we're so adamant all the time on stage about this, about saying God's word. Because you can, you can come to church and you can hear that your words are what's steering your life, but some of us just don't want to believe that where we're at in life right now is a result of the words that we've said in the past. The quicker that we can just accept responsibility for where we're at, maybe because of what we've said, and look, some of it could be because we didn't know this, right? Like, you could be at that stage like, man, I never heard that. But if you've heard for years now, that your words steer the course of your life, then there is no more excuses. We must accept responsibility for that. And here's the good news about God's word. You can start speaking God's word now and create a different path than the one that you're on. Yes. And so when a situation comes up in your life, maybe you get a report from a doctor that's not so great. You have a choice to make right there. There's a couple different roads that you could go down, right? But your words, what you say next is going to determine that. So, you know, when, we're, when, we come, when we come to, let's just say this is you here. All right, you. All right, here we are, 2023. And we've got, we, we come to this place here, and then, you know, there's a, okay, here's a nice road. Look, can y'all tell that's a road? There's a road there. That's a direction I can go, right? Um, here's, you know, let me, let me do another one. Oh, man, that's a, that's a skinny road there. That one may be a little harder to travel. And then I've got, you know, I've got a road here. I've got a road here. Oh, man, that road doesn't even have the zig, the things on it there. Got a road here. So, look, it's not, it's not just that, that you've got two options, right? There's, there's a lot of different ways that you could go. And, and these are coming up. Can you all even see that over there? Well, sit more towards the middle next time. Now you learned a lesson, okay? <laughs> all right. Sit closer and come on in, all right? Um, so here we are. So he's saying, stop. when you come to the crossroads and there's a decision to be made, stop and look around. Like, don't just plow right on ahead and say, whatever will be, will be. If you, if you say that and you do that, guess what? Whatever will be, that will be, okay? But he's saying, stop. Take a look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. So we've talked about this, and, and I hope you know this. When we're talking about the old godly way, um, and what he was saying is like, okay, here, when you come to this, when you come to this uh, place, I've got a watchman, all right? There's a watchman right there. And I want to read. I want to go ahead and get out of order real quick. How about I do this? Just teach right behind this board right here. How's that? <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm gonna skip ahead to Ezekiel. I think. 
I gave her so many wrong verses. She said, this isn't even in the Bible. I was like, well, well, I'm like, it's in there somewhere. Help me find it. Okay. All right. Ezekiel 33, one through nine. Here's what it says about watchmen. It says, once again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your people this message. When I bring an army against the country, the people of that land choose one of their own to be a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to the people. Then if those who hear the alarm refuse to take action, if the, it's their own fault if they die. They heard the alarm, but ignored it, so the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But if the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people, he is responsible for their captivity. They will die in their sins, but I will hold the watchman responsible for their deaths. Wow. Check this out. Check this next part out. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. I don't know. When I, when I read this, if I was Ezekiel, I'd be like, oh, Lord, please, I just, do not make me a watchman. That sounds like a lot of responsibility, right? He says, I'm making you a watchman over the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. Wow. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself. Man, this sounds like a lot of responsibility. If you're like, you're like man, I'm glad he's reading that uh, Old Testament in Ezekiel there. That sounds like he, God is not talking to me. <laughs> well, I got news for you. There's, there's some New Testament application of this. You know that it's a word that Pastor Nate has used a lot lately. You are an ambassador for Christ, right? You're an ambassador. That means you're, you are delegated, you are sent, you're a diplomat to speak on his behalf. And there are words that he is going to give you for people in your life, and he is going to hold you responsible for making sure those words come out. Hey, this is heavy. This is responsibility. And a lot of the modern church doesn't like responsibility. And I'll go ahead and skip ahead a little further. Um, we'll read in the scripture where a lot of people are going to gather together and they're going to get under pastors who like to, to scratch their itch and just tell them the things that they want to hear. And they're gonna, all going to sit in an echo chamber and just talk about the same. They, they go to that church because they tell me what I want to hear. These, this is what's happening. But a watchman is responsible. Say, I'm responsible. We're responsible. And Joe did a message a few weeks ago on, on a Wednesday night, and it was one he did in Frontline, talking about our words and the power of our words. And he had this statement, does God's expectation of me go beyond what my comfort level is confined to? Many of us have this comfort level where we don't want any responsibility, and we'll just straight up reject any responsibility, thinking that if we don't ever uh, take responsibility for anything, like it was never there to begin with. That's not how responsibility works, though. Just because you pretend you don't have it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. So if you are, if you are, look, if you have given your life to the Lord, guess what? You're His. He is Lord. And now I'm an ambassador. I'm his ambassador. There's some awesome things that go with this, though. You know what an ambassador, when they go over to an international country, they're a diplomat over there. They have this cool thing called diplomatic immunity. I thought this, I first learned this from Lethal Weapon. So <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Don't go watch it. If there's, I, it was a long time ago. I shouldn't have watched it. But there was this bad dude on there. He did bad stuff. And then the cops are after him. And Mel Gibson's after him, and he's claiming diplomatic immunity. And he said it in his smug South African accent that made you just, you know, you ever want to punch those people straight through the TV screen? He was one of those. Diplomatic immunity. I'm like, dude, you're breaking every law, but that's, that's the thing. The laws here, there don't apply to him because he's a diplomat. The, law, the natural laws of this world here, like Pastor Austin was saying, the laws that the world does, here's how you make money in the world. That is not the laws in the kingdom that you are now an ambassador from. It doesn't work the same way. You're part of a different country. You're part of a different kingdom. It's different. The, the law of sickness and disease and, and how that's running rampant in the world, that does not apply to you. It is unlawful for a citizen of heaven to live in sickness and disease. It's against the law. It's against the law. So, say, I'm a watchman. I'm a watchman. And we're going to talk about another watchman, too. 
So if you can put up, uh, Cindy, put up Jeremiah uh, 6 again for me, 6-1, so I know where I'm at. Okay, so here we're at. We're at the crossroads. God says, I've put a watchman there to, to sound the alarm, you, so, and I've given him something to tell you. So here we are. He said, uh, look around, ask for the old godly way and walk in it. So the old godly way, we get this confused sometimes because we like to talk about the good old days. Every one of us in here, unless you're like under the age of 10, has the good old days, right? Because something that you experienced in your past, an era in your life, you would consider the good old days. Man, that was back when times were a lot simpler, you know, in the good old days. For me, like, I don't know, like 1994, what a great year. I was nine years old, you know, fourth grade. I mean, I just had, I had pogs and basketball cards, and you just live in the dream, Okay. Great year. I mean, the good old days, right? But that's not what we're talking about. You know, the good old days back in 1950 where everyone had, you know, you just go to a, a, you get the burger and a shake and Miss Cleaver and all the stuff, right? It's, everything's black and white. It's Pleasantville, all right? That's not what we're talking about. It's not the good old days because the, in 2023, you're like, man, if we can just get back to the good old days, the good, old, the, the good old days that you're thinking about are long gone. What you're thinking about is long gone, and it's an inferior version of what we're talking about right here. He's saying, ask for the old, what way? The godly way. This is, this, here's what it's called. It's called eternal. Eternal. Eternal? Eternal. <laughs> ask for the eternal way. There's a path up here. There's a path over here that will take you down the eternal way, the eternal way. And I don't want to miss this in my, in my notes here because we're, we're really out of order. Uh, hold on a sec. Okay, go to Proverbs chapter 14, 12, please. Well, first in the NLT and then in the Passion, Proverbs 14, 12. And you've heard this before because when we, when we come up to this crossroads here, guess what? There's a path, there's a path that seems right. Look, it seems right, but guess what it ends in? It ends in death. It ends in destruction. Can we read this from the Passion? Look at, look at this language right here. You can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen, but you'll find out in the end that you took the road to destruction. How often are we hearing this in the culture we live in today and we're doing this ourselves, how often am I rationalizing and justifying the path I took? I might even find some type of scripture for it. And, and I'll find out that that road wasn't really the road I should have gone down at all. So there's a way that seems right. It looks right. You know, when I walk up to this crossroads and I'm coming from this direction... This is a nice wide road. It's got the little dotted lines where I can pass people who are going slow if they're driving in the stinking right lane, okay? So, look, this is nice and big. Uh, it, looks like, it looks like there's a lot of people going down that road. So, you know, this is what we tend to choose. Well, that, that I mean, the, the crowd's kind of going that way. And I'm just going to, if I just go where, the, you know, if you're going somewhere, you're going to a game and you're not quite sure where to go, you follow the crowd, right? And this is what's happening a lot today. People are just following the crowd. It looks busy. It looks crowded. It looks like there's safety there. But just because there's a crowd there doesn't mean there's safety there. In fact, Jesus tells us in um, Matthew, I believe. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. He says, enter through the narrow gate because the wide gate and the broad path, say broad path, is the way that leads to destruction. Nearly everyone chooses that crowded road. Nearly everyone does. Next verse. The narrow gate and the difficult way. Oh, the difficult way? It leads to eternal life. So few even find it. So when I come up here, guess what road isn't too appealing to me? This little narrow road right here that doesn't even have dotted lines. If I get behind someone slow, it's going to take a long time. And it looks difficult. There's stuff in the way. Right? Yeah. It looks difficult. Here, what, what does Jesus say? This is the way that leads to eternal life. Hold on. So you're saying what the decisions that I make, like that's, I have to make the right decisions in order to get to heaven? No, no, no. That's not what eternal life's talking about here. 
Well, you get to heaven when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, right? So when I, when I give my life to Jesus and I make him the Lord of my life, my destination is heaven. See, we're all, we're all trying to get here. I want to get there, right? So we're thinking about there, and really isn't there just here with a T? Right. <laughs> it is. So Pastor Nate even did a series on this a long time ago about getting there. We want to get there. We think that God's will for our life is getting there. Well, if there, if there is heaven, guess what? Your decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life gets you there. You're there. So where are you now trying to get to? That means the will of God for my life isn't a destination because my destination is wrapped up. The will of God for my life is, what does he want me to do right here? The will of God for my life is right here. It's right here. So when Jesus is saying, this is the path that will lead to eternal life, he's not talking about your destination. He's talking about a way of life. This is the path to the Zoe life, the God kind of life. So right here, this path right here, it looks difficult. It looks small. It's narrow. It looks like there could be things in my way. It doesn't look like it'll be easy. But Jesus didn't promise us just a, an easy stroll down a crowded road. But if you want the will of God for your life, ask. Ask the watchman here when you get here. Ask him which way to go. Who, who is the watchman? This is the Holy Spirit. This is who, in the Old Testament, this wasn't the case. This was, guess who this was that was, we read about earlier? This was Moses and the prophets. Who is the watchman? This, the watchman is the Word of God and the author of the Word. It's the Holy Spirit. Okay? All right, let's pick back up here. Um, I want to read just a few scriptures real quick. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I'm going to zoom through there. Or, sorry, Psalms 119. You don't even have to put these up there. I'm just going to zoom through. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. The lamp and the light are super good for us because I'm not concerned about way down the road. Where I'm concerned about is right here and down this, what it may seem like a dark path. Guess what? I've got a lamp and a light to guide me now. Okay? Uh, Proverbs, Psalms 37. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Wow. So God's path for our life doesn't mean it's like this linear path right here, right? That's what we're talking about. This, you know, when I get, when I get to the end of this road right here, it could, it, could kind of, it could kind of veer off this way right here. It's, this is not a, just a straight shot to there. And there could, be, there could be things in the way, you know, you feel like, man, I don't... So a lot of us feel like we're not in the will of God when we're walking through a tough time. That, that's not the gauge to, to know if you're in the will of God or not. Did you know that the time that you're in, you could be walking down a path where there's other people, where there's things going on, and, and guess what? You have the light and the lamp to show them the way out of that path right there, right? If there's death and destruction, guess what? You have life and the God kind of life to lift other people off of that path and onto the path they need to get on, right? Are y'all with me today? Am I getting, am I, is this too much scribble now? All right. Um, you can tell how I just moved on. I didn't care anyway. Um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He'll show you which path to take. Okay, so uh, John chapter 16. So we talked about the watchman. In my message on, on Wednesday when we talked about this, I talked about us as a watchman, and we certainly are. And this is why we stress and we focus on around here community, and we focus on small groups, and we focus on uh, knitting ourselves together with other believers. Because... When I'm walking through life together and I come to a crossroads, if I'm surrounded by a bunch of people, because look, I, we act as watchmen uh, in other people's lives too, and you have watchmen in your lives. And when you come to the crossroads, depending on the, the group that you hang with, 
Guess who is influencing the decisions that you're making and the path that you're taking? That group. So don't you want to make sure you're surrounded by a group who's going to give you the same thing as the watchman, as the word? They're going to confirm what God's word says and confirm what path to take. But if I'm not surrounded by people like that, I'm getting, I'm getting differing opinions and voices, and now I'm considering all these different paths, right? So it matters. It matters very much who I surround myself with. Very much. In John chapter 16, this is talking about the Holy Spirit. It says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you, say guide you, into all truth. He won't speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. How does that sound for him to tell you about the future? See, let's, get, let's get, not get caught up in, in there. And Jesus, before this, Jesus is saying, he was telling his disciples, you know, this is, this is where we're wanting to go. Jesus is saying, there's a lot of things that I want to tell you, but you can't bear them now. If we were to know steps two through 10 that God gave us, guess what we would do? We would find our own path to get there. And we would miss, we would run into obstacles, it would take us longer than it should, and we would miss all that God has for us on the road that he wants us to take to there. So we need to let the Holy Spirit tell us the future. The Holy Spirit may seem like a very, almost like a Pentecostal term to you. Although Pentecostal is not a denomination, it's a biblical term. But the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of every person who makes Jesus their Lord. So if Jesus is your Lord, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. He's on the inside of you. And he is a watchman in your life. All right, let's look at this last verse here. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I went to this earlier, but we'll close up with this. Paul's talking to Timothy, and he says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. So this was right after, guess what, 2 Timothy 4 is right after 2 Timothy 3. And at the end of 2 Timothy 3, that's when he's talking about, here's what the Word will do. The Word of God uh, is inspired by him. It's his very essence. It's who he is. It does all these things. And he's telling Timothy, preach the Word. Preach the Word. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. So there's people who are at crossroads now, and they're not listening to the watchman because they're just wanting to hear what they want to hear because they want to keep going down the road that they're on. And so if you're, you know, if you're on a road that, that you don't like right now, if you feel like you are at a crossroads where you've got a decision to make, or maybe you don't feel either one of those things, and maybe you're just thinking, what, what does this message have to do with me? I'm not at a crossroads. I don't even, you know, I, I don't even really get some of this. I want you to know that every day, like we talked about earlier, there is something that comes up in your day where you have a decision to go one way or the other. One way or the other. And you get it to, to decide what inputs are going to influence the decision that I make. And, and listen, again, when Jesus is our Lord, that word Lord means that we are submitted to him and we now follow his direction. So when we come to these places, we are to stop, we are to look at the word, we are to consult the Holy Spirit and say, what should I do here? What should I do here? What decision should I make? And I know you have an answer for me. And again, if he'll give you that word, he will give you that word. And if you are surrounded by people who will confirm the word, they'll give you the word, they'll give you the word, they'll give you the word. They won't, they won't just pat you on the back and tell you what you want to hear, but they'll, don't be that person who pets someone where they're at. You comfort them. Here's how you comfort people. If I want you to comfort me, I want you to comfort me with one thing and one thing only, the truth. Do not pet my deception. 
Don't allow me to stay deceived and, and in a place where I'm looking inward and it's all about me. Give me the truth. Somebody say, give me the truth. Because Jesus said it's the truth that will set you free. It's the truth. It's not the pat on the back saying, it's okay, it'll be all right. Just keep doing what you're doing. No, no, no. It's the truth. If you want to be free, if you want a different path for your life, if you want God's will for your life, you need the truth. You need God's word. Say, give me the word. Give me the word. It's God's word that I need. It's God's word that you need. It's God's word that people out there need. They don't even know that they're at a crossroads. But the path that I'm on, if I'm asking the Lord, and it's not all rose petals and lilies and whatever else we, we think is so easy, I'll encounter some of those people on assignment. And guess what? I'm responsible. I'm responsible to share with them what I know. I'm an ambassador. You're an ambassador. We're responsible to share what we know with others. Amen? Amen. Well, let's stand this morning. We'll close up. Did y'all get anything out of this, or, or was it, was it a little too chicken scratch? And guys, it's the word. You know, I. It's funnily enough, as often as I'd get a speak up here and everything, I'll, I'll never, I'll never tire of just talking about the the word of God and the power of the word of God. I just won't. It, it, it's the power of God unto salvation. It's it. Everything, Jesus said, literally everything, the heavens and the earth will melt. But my word, it's, nothing's ever happened to it. The word is the only lasting, eternal thing that we have. It will take me from here on into eternity. And if I don't know what the word says right now, there's coming a time where you're going to know it one way or another. Know it now. If you don't learn it now, you'll have to learn it there. You don't become all-knowing once you cross the other side. Does that blow your mind? We don't. We're not all the same. Once we get to heaven, we're not all the same. That should make us happy. <laughs> but you look sad. <laughs> we got to have the word, and we got to have it now. Say it one more time. Say, give me the word. I need the word. I need, I need friends in my life who will give me the word. I need, I need the watchman in my life. I need to respond to what he says, and I need to surround myself with people, with other watchmen, who will give me the word. Give me the truth. Give me the truth. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for your word today. Your word is everything to us because, as you said, it is the only lasting eternal thing. So Lord, I just thank you for wherever uh, all of us are at. On that road, if we're at a crossroads, if we don't think we're at a crossroads, but we really are, we ask that you would just open our eyes to see uh, and to reveal to us where we're at and the decisions that we're making. Lord, we want to make the right decision. There's no one under the sound of my voice who uh, purposely wants to make the wrong decision. So we thank you for your light and revelation from your word today that we have all that we need to make the right decision every time we come to a crossroads. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher and our guide who guides us every step of the way. We lean on him, we rely on him and we yield to you, Holy Spirit. Where you say to go, that's where we'll go. What you say to do, that's what we'll do. We hear your voice clearly and we do obey. And Lord, I just thank you uh, for that, for every person in here. If that's their heart, I just thank you for grace to hear and to obey. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, let's do this too. If there's any, anyone in here who hasn't made Jesus the Lord of your life, you know, that's the first step. You know, you, you can come to a crossroads. This is the first crossroad that you're gonna come to until you make Jesus your Lord that truly matters. And, and if you don't do this, if you don't make this decision, then none of the other, other decisions matter because you won't have the watchman to help you make those decisions. The path that you're going down, it goes one way. It's a one-road ticket to destruction and death. 
But when you make Jesus your Lord and you have the Holy Spirit, there's eternal life and the God kind of life awaiting you every step of the way. So if you haven't made that decision, I want to pray a prayer with you this morning. If you're watching online, there's going to be people who watch this maybe a week, two weeks from now who need to make this decision. Then we want to, we want to make this available for them. I want to make it available for you. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, man, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life today. I need to make that decision. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the watchman in my life for the decisions that I make. Awesome. Well, let's do this for, I don't see any hands. Let's do this for the people who, who may be watching. Let's bow our heads and let's repeat this. Maybe you didn't raise your hand and you, you want to make this commitment in this prayer. Just repeat this after me, everyone in here. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Thank you for saving me. Jesus, I call you my Lord. You're my Savior. Thanks for making a way for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, guys, we love y'all. Uh, I hope y'all had a great spring break of staying home and doing nothing. Um, hey, you got the rest of the afternoon. The rain's done. Go uh, play around in the mud. Let's let it dry up and have some fun. Uh, any announcements, anything? Nope, good. Hey, oh, also, hey, real quick. If y'all, we're still doing the morning prayer thing. So for those of you who have been coming or you want to come back, maybe get in the routine of that, we'll be here from 6 to 8.30 this week for prayer in the morning, all right? All right, y'all have a great day.